Welcome back today guys. Today I'm like, yo, how excited could I be today? Today I'm like extremely excited. Yo, you see this in the box right here? It can't hold my excitement because today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite ethnic groups. Um, it's an ethnic group that I really, really love. Um, yo, maybe I should do a little dance or something like that, I don't know, because I love these people and um, I have a big fascination with uh, the people I will be talking about today. So let's get right into it. Today we're going to be talking about the Maasai people. The Maasai people are located in Kenya, uh, in Tanzania, the countries that are in East Africa and are nomad people that move from place to place with their entire cattle. Um, to the Maasai, the cow is very important. Before the British colonized and other Africans, uh, Arabs, and European explorers considered the Maasai very formidable, formidable warriors. Now after the colonization of Kenya by the British, we have to understand that the Maasai uh, was moved to the southwestern part of Kenya but even with the push to be more westernized the Maasai traditional spirit helped them insist on staying Maasai and not being British so that's a good thing I really appreciate a lot of Maasai uh, that stayed themselves stayed African stayed Maasai didn't want to be British yo thumbs up to you my brothers and sisters thumbs up to you strong strong people right so the Maasai are thought to have a, uh, originally came from the Upper Nile Valley and the Maasai have a story and their story was passed down from generations to generations to generation in which the Maasai say that they climb up or they climbed up from a, um, a broad deep crater which was uh, bounded on all sides by a steep long cliff and this is what the Maasai's uh, story of, of where they come you know where they came from and being nomads the Maasai migrated down North Africa you know from North Africa down through East Africa and into the savannah of East Africa the grassland uh, region which is in between Kenya and Tanzania the Maasai speakers of the Ma language more than 20 variants of Ma exist um, and the Maasai's refer to their language as Olma and with the languages uh, comes with the Maasai beliefs and Maasai have many beliefs that they talk about on a daily basis on a nightly basis um, you know it's Maasai culture and uh, and some of their ancient beliefs include uh, the crater like I stated the crater which they ascended from so they came from they believe they came from a crater and they ascended from the crater um, you know the uh, first Maasai prophet, uh, the killer of a giant, uh, uh a giant who was killing Maasai herds and, and sheeps, um, as well as the story of two equal tribes, one consisting of all men and one consisting of all women. Now, if we talk about this myth, let's let's take a minute about this myth. Actually, I love all the the uh, myths and you know, as far as even the one with the giant and the, uh, the 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 man from the Maasai tribe that killed the evil giant that was that was killing the herd and man, just beautiful stuff, right? Very mythical and very ancient stuff. But let's talk about um, a little bit more about the the man and the woman tribes, right? So the woman uh, tribes and the man tribes is one of the Maasai myths. So uh, let's say in ancient times long ago uh, in the Maasai tribe the, the woman uh, raised the gazelle and had elephants as they devoted uh, as their devoted friends the elephants were their friends became their friends uh, and the zebras would transport the woman's goods so the elephants would clean the antelopes um, corrals and bring the woman's wood to build the houses however the woman would bicker and fight not saying all women do, but yo, these women were bickering and fighting and they had, uh, you know, quarrels, you know, and one day the herds escaped. They, they left. They, they got loose. And as did the elephants. And because of this, the elephants left because the women were never satisfied with what they did, bringing them wood. The elephants would bring them wood and, you know, um, help them build houses and, and, and clean for them, you know, uh, other animals, corrals and things like that. And that's, the elephants are like, you know what, you lost your, your, you lost your herd and you're not thankful to us, we're out of here. I mean, I love these kind of stories. I love them because they're ancient and they're mythical and I just, I love them, right? So, excuse me. So the, uh, the women, uh, you know, were all alone at that point. And on the man's tribe, that's the woman's tribe, right? So let's skip over to the man's tribe. For the men's tribe, the men raised cattle, sheep, uh, goats, and would not, you know, um, uh, lose any of, of these goats or cattles or, you know, any kind of animals that they had. But 
while other men in their tribe were watching the animals, some men would leave and some women would leave and they would go into the uh, force and they would, you know, do what the men and women do. Who knows who's watching, if kids are watching, they will do with what men and women would do. And the kids that were, uh, came out of this uni unity uh, would live with the mother and while when they would go live with the the woman or the the mother in the woman's tribe uh, The the boy the young boy and the young girl would live with the woman in the woman's tribe until the boy was about uh, you know around uh, I would say you know a young man going into a man and then he would transfer over to his his father's tribe Which is the man's tribe now if you're you know following with me I know I might get a little mixed up right here following with me. We're talking about the the ancient uh, Two tribes where it was a woman tribe all woman tribe and all man tribe that the Messiah uh, You know passed down for generations as a story so excuse me uh, You know the woman tribe lost their herd so as the woman tribe lost their herd, they had to join and live with the men, and this is part of the Messiah's belief, and this is how women and men um, in the Messiah community linked up together and, and created one tribe. Now, we must talk about the Messiah and what they believe. The Messiah uh, are not Christians, um, and they are not Muslims. They uh, believe in their own traditional God, and the Messiah believe in Enkai, and that's the name of the uh, traditional deity that they believe in, Enkai. And Enkai uh, place uh, them at the center of the universe, and Messiah believe that Enkai created the earth and the universe and everything, and chose the Messiah to be a chosen, you know, the chosen people. And Kai created three tribes, and one being Pygmy, which we all know, which I'll make another video about that, the really, really short, short, uh, um, you know, African ethnic group, Pygmy, which he gave certain life uh, surviving items to these three different tribes. Pygmy, uh, there was another one, uh, the Tob, Tob, uh, and obviously the Maasai. And um, he gave life surviving uh, items like honey and seeds uh but the third tribe obviously was the ethnic group was the maasai and to whom in kai gave cattle which the maasai hold very very dearly and love cattle and believe that cattle is everything means everything food um you know uh, milk uh clothing everything to the maasai cattle is um and in the in the maasai's belief in kai sent cattle which came to the earth sliding down a long rope uh linking from heaven and to you know the earth so coming from heaven down to the earth and for many Maasai the center of the world remains like I said with their cattle there's nothing more important than their cattle to the Maasai which furnish you know uh, um, uh, you know their housings uh, provide clothing for them food and you know shelter at the end of the day so as we always I want to make sure I you know let you guys really really understand is that you know the cow means everything uh, and cattle means everything to the Maasai so life for the Maasai is a series of, of tests which involve you know pain endurance uh, the girls and boys both get circumcised for you know uh, let's see around eh, around four years old three eh, like yeah for around four year old four years old force I said force well yeah force around four years old they get circumcised and uh, the, the boys uh, cannot flinch if they flinch that's bad that's very bad for a Maasai boy to flinch when it takes place uh, they are penalized if they flinch they're penalized with uh, one head of cattle that they must their family must give up and as well as bring shame to their family great great shame to their family however if the boy shows that he has great bravery and does not blink. He is rewarded with cattle and sheep. Um, and this takes place in a village especially uh, for the tradition of, you know, circumcising young boys and women. And also, this village is known, and this was the part that I really, really love. I think I'm going to make a tree house for my kids one day uh, that says this because I, I love it. And the village is known um, as the Village of Little Birds. I love that. The Village of Little Birds. I, I just love that. I'm going to maybe make a tree house or something for my kids or, you know, some kind of African, uh, you know, uh, place that they can go into when I have whenever I have kids I have no kids but whenever I have kids and I would like to put village of little birds I think I thought that was really really you know nice you know and cute so um, after these ceremonies you know the guests drink mead 
which I love mead. And if you don't know what mead is, mead is uh, made from honey and uh, it's a honey wine. It's fermented from honey and created into a wine or made into a wine. So after these ceremonies are all taking place, uh, a lot of people would gather and they would drink mead and wine, you know, mead wine, uh, which is honey wine. And they would, you know, celebrate and have a good time and celebrate the fest, you know, the festivities and the special um, uh, passage in that young woman or that young man's life, which will not be the only one, which will be uh, a number of, of many. Now, after the circumcision and a little bit time after that, uh, the Maasai man's life, he must fulfill uh, his civic requirements. And this is similar to military service in the Maasai uh, ethnic group and society. And the Maasai men at this point go out into the wilderness and uh, live several months where they learn to overcome selfness, uh, oh, I'm sorry, selfishness, uh, egotism, and share what is theirs with their fellow Maasai warriors. And after a few months out there learning all these different skills and learning how to become a uh, well-rounded warrior, they return to the village where they must sacrifice their cattle at ceremonies and offer uh, gifts um, of cattle to new households. This teaches the warriors to respect uh, you know, everyone and how to contribute to his or her community. Oh, I'm sorry, his community. Uh, not her at that point, but his community. I apologize for that. And after this stage, the warrior ends his, um, his periodic trips to the wilderness and returns to the village. So that's one of the ways that Maasai's uh, become warriors. That's part of the, uh, you know, the first part is to go out into the wilderness and to, uh, you know, survive, get rid of a lot of your ego, you know, your ego, uh, learn how to share. Um, and also, I should have noted that, you know, going out there and if they're encountered by a lion or any kind of animal, but more so a lion, it is the most highest, um, the most highest, uh, let's see, what, what would be the right terminology for this? It is the most highest respects for a Maasai warrior to come back and, and to have killed a lion. And that Maasai warrior is usually, uh, you know, um, you know, catapulted to the top of the community as a warrior and to be strong. And I've killed a lion. I mean, yeah, I would too. You killed a lion. I mean, you know, it's just not an easy thing to do. Uh, unless, last time I checked, unless any of you guys have killed a lion, but I've never killed a lion. Unfortunately, I've only seen some behind bars, you know, imprisoned at the zoo and not in the wild. But if it was in the wild, that I I would I bow down to whoever that was too because it's like, man, it's a lion. You know, can you kill a lion without a gun? I don't know if you can. I don't know if I could. But to the people that do do it, they're you know, catapulted to being the ultimate warriors and very respected and very renowned in their village and in the Maasai culture. Now, the Maasai lifestyle usually consists of the man speaking for the woman and making the family decisions, uh, the male elders deciding the community matters, as well as the same age men sharing everything. And this even includes their wives at some times. Yes, their wives, the Maasai way, right? Some people might be getting mad right now. Some people are like, yes, I want to be Messiah. Like, yo, who knows, right? I'm not going to say me either way because I'm not trying to, I want you guys to get mad at me. But then again, yo, I might be a Messiah over here. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this is something that they, that they do. This is their, this is their beliefs. This is their culture. And we need to respect that. So women are promised uh, in marriage uh, before they are of, of, of that age that they're, you know, supposed to get married. Uh, daughters can never you know, be near their fathers when their fathers eat because that is disrespectful and that's another story. Um, boys and girls are raised together till they are seven and mothers are remain very, very close to their sons uh, throughout their whole life. Now, the Maasai, you know, depend on their cattle for both food and cooking, as I've stated before, uh, and they use it as, you, you know, for utensils as well as shelter and clothing. And uh, the cattle's ribs make stirring sticks, uh, spatulas, and spoons as well. Horns are used as a uh, as a butter dishes and also as gourds or uh, large cups for drinking meat. Now, the traditional Maasai diet consists of six basic foods, which would be meat, blood, milk, fat, honey, and tree bark. Wild animals such as chicken, fish, and salt are forbidden from the Maasai diet. And allowable meats include uh, roasted and boiled beef, goat, and mutton. Now, both fresh 
and curd milk are drunk and animal blood is drunk at special times after giving birth, after circumcision, or while recovering um, from a accident. It, is, it may be tapped, you know, uh, exactly from the cow's throat, which would be warm blood, and I've seen it done before, and they tap the, you know, right in the neck of the, uh, the cow, and then, then the blood comes out, and they drink it straight from the, the cow's throat, or mixed with milk, and sometimes, in instances, milk and honey in some cases. Now, honey is obtained from the Toro tribe, and this is a prime ingredient in mead, and the Toro tribe is, um, next to you know one of the neighboring tribes of uh, the Maasai and this is like I said this is an ingredient for 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 me and it's a fermented uh, you know fermented fermented can we get the word out it's a fermented beverage uh, that the elders may drink as well so in recent times uh, you know fermented maize which is corn and millet yeast or a mixture of fermented sugar and baking powder have become the primary ingredients for meat now the Maasai generally eat two meals a day two meals yes two 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 meals in the morning and at night they have a dietary pro, you know prohibition against mixing milk and meat that's a no-no yo you go to Maasai you can't mix milk with the meat so don't do it no milk no meat same time only milk only meat they drink milk for 10 days, as much as they want, straight. Milk, 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 milk. Maasai love milk, right? They drink as much milk as they want, and then they eat meat and bark soup for several days in between, you know, when they're not drinking milk. So, labor amongst traditional herding Maasai is divided. The man's responsibility is to tend to the cattle, and he must protect them, find them the best uh, possible pasture for them to eat, uh, you know, pastoral land, and the best watering holes, while the woman raises the children, maintain the home, cook, um, and they do the milking of the, uh, the cattle. They also take care of the calves and clean and sterilize and decorate the uh, the drinking gourds that they that they make that the women make, and it is the woman's special right to offer milk to the men and to visitors that have traveled far and near, and that is something that the woman can now the Maasai do. have are very famous for their clothing. As people know, I love their clothing a lot. Most people will know their clothing when they see it. They'll be like, oh, that's Maasai. Even though there are some ethnic groups that are close to them that are very, you know uh, resemble them, like the Samburu. Um, you know, the Maasai are very distinctive. So the Maasai clothing varies between sex, age, and location. Traditionally, uh, you know, the capes were worn uh, by women and the men, and they were made from the calf's uh, hides for the man, and for the women were made of the sheepskin. But in 1960, which is something that I didn't even know, the Maasai replaced the uh, animal skin with the cloth, uh, the cotton cloth. And, you know, obviously, as you know them now from what they wear, and now it's cloth, not animal uh, skin. So the capes known as shuka are preferred to be red. Most Maasai you will see will be wearing red shukas. I, I, that's what I've seen mostly, but they do wear different colors as well. And they, um, the other colors that they do wear are blue uh, shukas, black shukas, other African prints, you know, uh, prints on the shukas, and as well as the checkered, uh, you know, checkered cloth, design on the shukas as well so the Maasai care deeply about their appearance and excel in their jewelry design uh, very very famous for their jewelry design especially the women the women wear very 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 beautiful signature neck beads which I'm pretty sure you've seen it at some point um, on TV or something and if you haven't when you see it you'll love it and uh, they were also wear very beautiful headbands earrings and which are very 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 colorful and they go very beautiful with their red shukas I love the word shuka, and they go very, very beautiful with them. The Maasai ethnic group is a very beautiful group. They jump very high as well, and they're very known to, um, you know, have uh, very high jumping distances. They're very quick. They're very slender people. Uh, a lot of people say they can run a long way or they can run pretty fast, but they can. So I don't even have to guess that because I can just look at them and tell. And the Maasai is a very beautiful ethnic group. So the, the women are so beautiful with their, uh, their, their beaded necklaces and what they wear. And I just saw, oh, man, I just love the Maasai. One day I have to go visit the Maasai. Uh, the Maasai is very 
very well known in Africa and around the world. And in Kenya and Tanzania, the Maasai are, um, are, are very well known and very popular. And that's what a lot of people actually go to those countries to see. So once again, to all my Maasai people out here, wherever you at, I love you, I love you, I love you. I mean, the Maasai is a very, very beautiful ethnic group. And um, you know, I just I always wanted to be a Maasai warrior. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to ask some of the elders, when can I come? to Tanzania or Kenya to become a Maasai warrior. I would really like to become a Maasai warrior. I mean, I really would. Um, you know, even if it was danger on the line, it would be an honor for me to, you know, go and become a Maasai warrior. So, as always, today, my, to all my people, we have learned about another uh, black ethnic group. Bam, bam, bam. Yo, another one. Yo, we are moving along here. And I appreciate all the feedback you guys are giving me. I love it. Let's keep it going. And to all my black people around the world, yo, I love you. Um, and like I always say, learn about your people, every country, everywhere. And yo, I'm out. Peace. One love.